right, well, uh, right now, I am on the Pacific Island of Saipan. And in the, the past couple episodes, we were talking about the, the, the landings of the 2nd and 4th Marine Divisions here in June of 1944 to, to try and, and wrestle this island uh, away from Japanese control. Now, the 2nd the Marine Division, their objective once they landed was to, to move inland and then hook left and go north along the western side of Saipan. For the 4th Marine Division, they were tasked with moving inland and taking this feature that you see here behind me, uh, Mount Tapachau, and the spot where I'm at right now, which is Aslito Airfield, which was going to be heavily reinforced and defended by the Japanese. Apparently, I should have paid a little bit closer attention to the weather because as I was filming that last clip, towards the end, I felt a few sprinkles and then, man, the clouds opened up. And it is pouring right now. So we're going to let this kind of subside a little bit and then uh, we're going to get back out and take a look at some of the Japanese defenses here at Aslito Airfield. All right, well, we, we still got a little bit of a rain situation going on here, but it's light enough that we're not going to let it stop us because I really want to get out and check out some of these old Japanese fortifications here. Now, this structure right here, you can see these things all over the place surrounding the airfield. So these might have served as uh, air raid bunkers, um, also defensive positions you can see where there would have been a, a gun emplacement here so I, i've been to normandy a few times and i'm used to seeing like the the german bunkers and the german defenses so it's really interesting for me to kind of see things that uh the, the japanese would have constructed during world war ii and uh, it looks like we might have a little bit of battle damage on this one right here All right, we're gonna come around the, the back side of this thing and uh, take a look at it and see what we've got. There's my, there's my shadow. Okay, so right now, this wall right here is facing the western side of the island. So you can see they've, they have these gun ports facing both sides, one uh, inland towards the airfield and then one outward towards where uh, an attack might be coming from from the west and uh, yeah, it looks like here's our entrance into the bunker which is defended of course by this blast wall looking thing and if we can get in here that would just be cool as heck oh yeah sweet well if we have an open door to a bunker well of course we're going to go through it Okay, we've got our light out here. And oh my gosh, little door, little door. All right. Very, very interesting. Hopefully there's not some methed out hobo in here. Oh, dadgum, these doors are so small. And man, the ceilings. So I can stand up in here upright and I'm probably about 5'10", 5'11", so it looks like the, the ceilings here might be about six foot. And yeah, you can see the, the inside here where I showed that blast damage from the outside. And man, my voice sounds uh, interesting in here. So you can imagine uh, for the people who were inside whenever this got hit, if it was during the battle, we don't know if it was during the battle or if maybe they were just testing, uh, you know, tank ammunition afterwards. Boy, that would uh, probably give you a headache uh, if you were 
if you were in here. And then, yeah, here are those gun ports. So, yeah, if you've ever wondered what a Japanese bunker looked like, well, here you go. All right, we'll go through here. Oh, gosh, dang, bumped my head. Oh, dang. That's going to leave a mark. Now, in the lead up to the invasion of Saipan, intelligence reports said that there were probably 15,000 Japanese defenders on this island. Well, once the Marines landed, uh, they found out otherwise. Turns out there were about 30,000 Japanese defenders on this island. So the, the first few days were just absolutely horrible for these guys. Uh, I know that like with the, the 4th Marine Division, uh, one of their regiments suffered like up to 40% casualties in their, uh, in, in their assault units. Uh, but anyway, you would think that with the airfield that the, the fighting here would have been really, really intense. It turned out to be kind of lightly defended. Now I'm just speculating here, uh, so, so this is just me. But if you look around, like all of this area is really, really flat. And the Japanese probably knew that the Americans, one thing that they did well was bring their air power and naval power to bear. So here in this flat open area, they, they probably knew that they were going to just get pounded and uh, maybe found it easier to withdraw to the north into the mountains. But you would have had uh, the, I think it was the 25th Regiment of the 4th Marine Division that came in uh, to the north of the airfield and then uh, an element of, I think it was the 165th Regiment of the 27th Infantry Division that, that came in just to their right. All right, we're gonna go look at some more structures here. As we are walking around the airfield here, you'll, you'll see a lot of buildings that are built in this style right here. Anytime you see this, uh, that means it is a Japanese structure. Uh, so again, this is something that the Japanese would have utilized here at the airfield uh, throughout the 1930s and 1940s. And today serves as a uh, regional center for the American Red Cross. One quick thing before I move on, if you see these trees in any of the videos from uh, what I'm shooting here on Saipan, this is called a flame tree and it is absolutely stunning. Uh, they're, they're all over the island and uh, yeah, called flame tree for obvious reasons. Th this might uh, be my, my favorite tree on the planet now. Well, airfields are for planes and planes need fuel and if your enemy blows up your fuel supply well that might inhibit your ability to fly just a little bit so what we are looking at here is the fuel tank that the Japanese had for Aslito airfield except for they they built this earthen mound around it uh, to kind of protect it and also to try and camouflage it from above. Oh, and it looks like we also have a rainbow. All right, but anyway, there's the, the fuel supply for the Japanese at Aslito Airfield. Now, uh, I'm not going to claim to be an expert on Japanese armor. But I'm going to go out on a limb and say that this thing is non-operational. Uh, what we are looking at here is a Japanese tank that is a relic from the Battle of Saipan. Uh, I, I don't know if this one took part in the big tank assault 
that occurred on uh, you know within the first few days of the battle. Uh, Saipan is the site of the largest Japanese tank assault of the war. But man, it is cool to get up here and see one of these things up close. Uh, Japanese armor was uh, really no match for anything that the Americans had for it. The uh, the armor plating was really, really thin, and of course the the armaments were mm, less than awesome. But this is something that, unless somebody told you about it, you might not even know existed because they don't really publicize this. All right, so all along here, there are just a, a number of these old Japanese buildings. So there would have been a hospital here. There would have been, uh, you know, like administration buildings. Uh, there, there would have been, uh, you know, bunkers and uh, crew quarters. Okay, now I, I don't know exactly what we're looking at here. Uh, we're just kind of doing some exploring right now. And looks like... We might have another tank. You'll have to uh, forgive me for kind of geeking out on this. This is my first time ever seeing a, uh, a, a Japanese tank and to see one here in Saipan where it actually saw service is just cool as heck to me. Uh, this one looks to be well ventilated. Um, but yeah, here's the main gun. And then also another crew serviced weapon right here. I think, if I'm not mistaken, that this particular tank had a two-man crew, maybe three. So, so again, I'm not an expert on, on Japanese armor in, in World War II. Um, so maybe somebody who knows more than me can, can enlighten me a little bit. But uh, yeah, always learning. That's why we're out here. Very, very cool. So we're continuing to just kind of walk around and do some exploring of this airfield. Got another uh, air raid shelter slash bunker uh, right here that was built by the Japanese. And there's another large structure right here behind me that as you can see, looks very, very well fortified. And that's because it was protecting something very, very important here at Aslito Airfield. So inside of this walled fortress is this structure right here. This is the Japanese munitions bunker that serviced the, uh, the bombers and the fighters for Aslito Airfield. So for obvious reasons, the, the Japanese really wanted to protect this spot right here. Uh, something else that is interesting, on December 8th of 1941, well, we, we know December 7th, you know, the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor. They also attacked the American territory of Guam. And bombers from the Japanese took off from Aslito Airfield to attack Guam. So lots of history here in this place. 
All right, well, we've got an open door, apparently. And uh, if there's an open door to a big bunker, uh, you know me, I can't resist myself. Uh, even though, as I was walking up, I just saw a giant rat run into that hole. So hopefully we don't, we don't have a, a situation like from uh, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade where this place is just crawling with them. Uh, but anyway, take a look at the blast doors on this thing. Actually, it looks like there are two blast doors. Interesting. And I'm also hearing a buzzing sound, like there's a nest of wasps or something. But anyway, man, this thing is huge. So you can see these rails up here where they would uh, be moving these bombs and munitions around. Huh. So yeah, on, on December 8th, this would have been uh, quite the, the active place as the Japanese were outfitting their bombers to go and attack the island of Guam. Wow. Hmm. Okay, well, there you go. Uh, that's pretty much it. That, that is the munitions bunker uh, here at the airfield. Now, as I mentioned earlier, uh, Aslito Airfield was, was taken with relatively few casualties, which was pretty remarkable, uh, you know, with all of the defenses that were around this place. Uh, after that, boy, th this was bad news for the Japanese. Uh, the, the CBs ended up coming in here once the, the area was secured and started, you know, building runways and building, uh, you know, things for the uh, US B-29 bombers to start using Saipan as a base of operations to launch attacks into uh, the Japanese home islands. Matter of fact, the, the first B-29 landed here in October of 1944, and then the first bombing raid on Japan from Saipan was in November of 1944. So, so this, was, this was really kind of the beginning of the end for the Japanese. Uh, now, after the airfield was secured, Elements of the 27th Infantry Division moved south to secure a uh, peninsula and, and clear it out. And another group turned north. And even though the securing of the airfield here had been done with relatively few casualties, what they were getting ready to run into was something awful. We're going to be tackling that in the next episode. <laughs>